Having enough safe and nutritious food is essential for maintaining life and promoting overall health. Food that is contaminated with harmful bacteria, viruses, parasites, or chemicals can lead to over 200 different illnesses, from diarrhea to cancer. This can create a harmful cycle of illness and poor nutrition, particularly impacting infants, young children, the elderly, and those who are already ill. Foodborne diseases occur when harmful agents are transmitted to the human body through contaminated food. These agents can be either infectious, such as bacteria, viruses, or fungi, or toxic, either naturally occurring in the food or introduced from external sources. There are several myths surrounding foodborne illness and food poisoning that can lead to misconceptions about food safety. Here are some common myths and the facts that dispel them, such as the myth is a food with enough pathogens to make you sick will always look, smell, or taste bad. But the fact is, food contaminated with pathogens may look, smell, or taste perfectly normal, yet still cause illness. Next myth is really fresh food cannot make you sick. But the fact is, even very fresh food can cause food poisoning if it is not handled properly. Next myth is, only dirty kitchens can make people sick. But the fact is, clean kitchens can still be sources of foodborne illness if food handling practices are not followed. Next myth is, properly cooked food can never cause food poisoning. But the fact is, food poisoning can still occur even if the food is cooked properly particularly if it was contaminated before cooking. Foodborne illnesses can arise from various sources, including contaminants, improper food handling practices, and food allergies. Understanding these factors is crucial for maintaining food safety. Contaminants in food can be chemical, such as residues from cleaning agents or pesticides, physical, including foreign objects like hair, bandages, or glass, biological, pathogens like bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi, which can be introduced through infected workers, unsanitary surfaces, or contaminated water. Biological causes of foodborne illness. Biological contaminants are the leading cause of foodborne illnesses. Many risks associated with biological contaminants can be mitigated through proper food handling practices. It is essential to follow safe food handling procedures to prevent illness. Microbes are tiny living organisms, many of which are harmless or beneficial, but some can cause serious health problems. The main types of harmful microbes include bacteria. These are present in many foods and can be harmful if pathogenic. Examples include Campylobacter, E. coli, Listeria, and Salmonella. Proper handling and cooking of food are necessary to prevent bacterial infections. Viruses. While viruses can cause illness, they do not grow or multiply in food. They often spread through improper handling or poor sanitation. Hepatitis A and norovirus are examples of viruses responsible for foodborne illnesses. Parasites. These organisms live in or on other hosts and can cause illness if food infected with them is not cooked or frozen to appropriate temperatures. Examples include trichinella, found in pork and some game meats, and roundworms, found in raw fish. Protozoa. These are single-celled organisms often found in contaminated water. Giardia lamblia is an example of a protozoan that can cause illness when food washed in contaminated water is consumed without further cooking. Fungi. Fungi, such as molds, can grow on decaying organic matter. While many fungi are harmless or beneficial, some, like mold on spoiled food, can be harmful and may remain even after visible mold is removed. By understanding these myths and the facts about foodborne illnesses, people can take better steps to prevent food-related health issues and ensure food safety. You might have heard of the 24-hour flu, but it's likely not a true medical condition. What many people refer to as the 24-hour flu is often actually a foodborne illness caused by pathogens. Foodborne illnesses can be categorized into two types, food intoxication and food infection, each with distinct characteristics. Food intoxication occurs when bacteria in food produce toxins, poisons, that cause illness. When you eat the contaminated food, these toxins are quickly absorbed into your body, leading to a rapid onset of symptoms. For example, Staphylococcus aureus is a type of bacteria that can cause food intoxication. Symptoms can appear within hours after consuming the contaminated food, often including nausea, vomiting, 
and abdominal cramps. Food infection happens when you eat food containing live pathogens that then grow and multiply in your digestive system. Since the bacteria continue to reproduce in your body, the onset of symptoms is generally slower compared to food intoxication. An example of a pathogen causing food infection is salmonella. Symptoms of food infection can take several days to develop and may include diarrhea, fever, and abdominal pain. Improper food handling practices. Several improper food handling practices can lead to foodborne illnesses. Here are the top 10 causes. Improper cooling. Failing to cool food quickly and adequately can allow bacteria to grow to dangerous levels. Advance preparation. Preparing food too far in advance without proper storage can lead to contamination and spoilage. Infected person. Food handlers who are sick with a contagious illness can spread pathogens to food. Inadequate reheating for hot holding. Not reheating food to the proper temperature can fail to kill harmful bacteria. Improper hot holding. Keeping food at incorrect temperatures can encourage bacterial growth. Contaminated raw food or ingredient. Using raw ingredients that are contaminated can spread pathogens. Unsafe source. Obtaining food from unreliable sources increases the risk of contamination. Use of leftovers. Improper handling and reheating of leftovers can result in foodborne illnesses. Cross-contamination. Mixing raw foods with ready-to-eat foods can transfer harmful bacteria. Inadequate cooking. Not cooking food to the correct temperature can leave harmful pathogens alive. Understanding these causes and the differences between food intoxication and food infection can help in taking preventive measures to ensure food safety and reduce the risk of foodborne illnesses. Follow these four simple steps to keep food safe. Clean. To ensure food safety, it's essential to keep hands, utensils, and food contact surfaces clean. Start by washing your hands with warm, soapy water for at least 20 seconds. Then dry them with a disposable paper towel or a clean cloth. Hand sanitizers are not a substitute for proper hand washing and are ineffective on dirty hands or against certain pathogens like norovirus. Clean cutting boards, dishes, and utensils with hot, soapy water after each use and either air dry or dry with a clean towel. Alternatively, you can use a dishwasher for washing. Countertops should be cleaned after preparing each food item. Use paper towels or a clean dishcloth to wipe spills and surfaces, then wash with hot, soapy water, rinse, and dry. For extra sanitation, use a diluted bleach solution, one teaspoon of 8.25% bleach per gallon of water. Apply to surfaces, let sit for one to two minutes, then wipe with a clean towel. Separate. To prevent cross-contamination, it's crucial to keep raw and ready-to-eat foods apart. When shopping, keep raw meat, fish, and poultry in separate bags to avoid their juices dripping onto other items. Use different bags for different types of raw foods and designate reusable bags exclusively for grocery shopping, ensuring they are frequently washed and dried. In the refrigerator, store raw meats, fish, and poultry below ready-to-eat foods to prevent juices from contaminating other items. When thawing frozen raw meats, place them on the lowest shelf or in a separate plastic bag to catch any drips. Thawed food should be cooked soon after defrosting, though it can be refrozen if needed. Cook. Ensure that all foods are cooked to the appropriate temperatures to kill harmful bacteria. Use a food thermometer to check that meat, poultry, and seafood reach a safe internal temperature. For instance, poultry should reach 165 degrees, 74 forder. Ground meats should be 160 degrees, 90 mugs. And fish should reach 145 degrees, I can see threes. Cooking food thoroughly is a key step in ensuring it is safe to eat. Chill. Proper refrigeration helps slow the growth of bacteria. Keep your refrigerator at or below 40 degrees, 4 degrees, and your freezer at 0 degrees, 18 degrees. Avoid leaving perishable foods out at room temperature for more than two hours or one hour if the temperature is above 90 degrees. 30 degrees. Store leftovers in shallow containers to help them cool quickly and prevent the growth of bacteria. Ensuring food safety is crucial for maintaining good health and preventing illness. By adopting simple practices like proper cleaning, separating raw and ready-to-eat foods, cooking to the right temperatures, and chilling foods promptly, you can effectively reduce the risk of foodborne illnesses. These steps not only protect your health, 
but also contribute to a safer and more enjoyable eating experience. Remember, food safety is a shared responsibility among everyone involved in food preparation and handling. By staying informed and vigilant, you contribute to a healthier and safer environment for yourself and others. Please click on the next video for more LiveGood info. Thank you very much.